Um, on the Israel Hamas situation, Penny Wong has called for steps towards a ceasefire. She's urging Israel to take those steps. What's your reaction to that? Look, I think at the moment it is absolutely tragic what is unfolding in the Middle East. And ever since, you know, Hamas's brutal terrorism on the 7th of November, it has been this tragedy that has, has been unfolding. You know, we have still have Israeli hostages, um, Israeli and international hostages. We don't know where there are over 200 of them. We don't know if they're still alive. Um, we don't know if we will ever see them again. And that is torturous for the families. Um, but we also have thousands and thousands of Gazans dying as well. And, you know, this community, the, the Australian community is incredibly, I think, um, traumatised by what they're seeing. Mm. So, you know, I've got an extremely big Jewish community and, you know, they are extremely concerned, um, you know, for the lives of those Israeli hostages, for the people who have already died. Um, but they're also concerned about the lives of, of Gazan civilians. And, you know, it really comes back to how can you deal with Hamas? How can you, pr you know, pr uh, protect, I think, Israel from future mm. Hamas attacks when they said they will keep on going. Right, um, they want October 7 to happen again and yeah. again. That's their word. So yeah. would a ceasefire... Do, do you agree with Israel's view? We saw you at the front today, so there's mm. obviously um, uh, or protesters, if you like, or people calling attention to the plight of those hostages today yeah. on the front of Parliament. You were there with the Israeli ambassador just telling our viewers what the pictures were there. Mm. Do you agree with the Israeli government that if there is that ceasefire just a full ceasefire, Hamas regroups, rearms and does, will try to do that again. Is that the inherent problem with one? I think this idea of a one-sided ceasefire with, you know, Hamas not re releasing hostages or not disarming is really problematic. But I think at the same time, we do expect Israel to look after humans and, and the Gazan mm. people and to see what they can do um, to reduce civilian casualties because we need to. It, it is it, a tragic Do you think time. they're doing that enough? I think we need to go casualties? further. I mean, and I think, you know, we so need to... So there's not enough um, from Israel, there's not enough, what, restraint or precision or I think it is. In, what, look, what's... I think it's incredibly hard. And so for me, the big piece is how do you get the aid into the Gazans right now? Mm. You know, so we know that before this happened, you would still get, you know, 200 trucks or something more of aid into Gaza. So, you know, how do you make sure that you get the water and the food for the civilians? Because I think that's people's concern. I am concerned very much for the civilians. Those okay. are the things that people, you know, this community is concerned so about. So whilst, uh, you know, acknowledging zero casualties is sadly impossible, mm. that Hamas uses civilians as human Absolutely. shields, you, you feel as though the aid aspect perhaps could be more of an effort from Israel to allow that to flow. That's it's, your... it's not only Israel. I think it is the community and the, the Arab community around there, but and, absolutely. And, I mean, Hamas, Israel says Hamas blocks it going. Absolutely. Well, they redirect I mean, petrol. I think that's it. That's, I think that is the great challenge is Hamas is not looking after its people. Mm. But still, I think we is, you know, need to make sure that those Gazans get the food and water and medical mm. attention that they need. I think that is absolutely okay. critical. But I'm also very concerned about what is happening domestically here. Because, you know, we all can have views overseas of what's happening and it is incredibly hard, I know, acknowledge for Israel to, to fight this war with a terrorist organisation. But, you know, they're also... Um, but, you know, domestically, this is... My, my concern is also what's happening to the community here and the rise of anti-Semitism. People travelling to your electorate yeah. purely to target... Um, Jewish people? Look, I think it was we had that protest on the weekend and that was really appalling um, because, you know, we all have the right to protest and, you know... The, the Caulfield one, sorry, or another one? You no, know, this was in... Uh, this is when in Coogee when right. we had a, a group of motorcycles um, coming into Coogee, coming into the area where half of the Jewish community in Australia... in Sorry, in New South Wales lives in, in the East End suburbs. And for me, this is about we do need to come together. You know, there are a lot of Muslim and Palestinian Australians who are losing lives, who are losing friends and families' lives right now, and mm. it is heartbreaking. It is a lot of people in my community who have lost people. But if we, if we, you know, if we exacerbate those tensions, if, you know, people are now saying calling on the boycott of Jewish businesses, I think that's appalling. That's not this country. So we need to absolutely okay. work hard to come together as a country right now as well. Well, I'm going to spend a appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thanks so much, John.